All right, hey everybody. My name is Ron Haight. I'm from Financial. As Jeanette said, um, you know, thank you guys for being here today. There was a lot of great content that you guys were able to see. I'm going to be the last speaker. I will do Q and A during the presentation and at the end. This is going to be live on the spot. I don't have a PowerPoint deck, which I like because I can show you exactly stuff as we're going to see it. You know, uh, stocks and their trends and, and so forth. Uh, I'm going to open up the, the uh, question box just to make sure I can see you guys, which I got. All righty. I'm going to say the disclaimer just because the lawyers make me, and it's always good to do anyway, right? That nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or selling security. Trading stocks and options involves risk and specific financial issues. Should always be addressed with your financial advisor. Past performance, no guarantee of future performance. All right. As Jeanette said, I've known Hubert and Jeanette for quite some time. Um, I enjoy their company very much. I enjoy working with them. And they were kind enough to invite me in a couple weeks ago. And Jeanette already asked you guys, did you see some of those stocks You know, we talked about? I'm going to show you which ones they are. And that's how I ended up being here today. Because the stuff that I've shown you, the specific stocks that I've shown you over the past few weeks, I said, hey, this is what the tendencies are. And it was four for four. Are you always going to bat a thousand? No, but when I show you the data, it is really going to be an eye opener. So in the emails that we sent out, I promised that within the first five minutes of going live, I would show you absolutely the hottest stocks for the summer, period. No ifs, ands, buts, no special algorithm, no special sauce, period. And that's what I'm going to do. The other question that you might have seen in the emails is this. What is the number one challenge that we face as traders walking into any trading day? I mean, today's the weekend, the summer, you know, is beginning. I'm headed to the beach as soon as this is over and uh, just for a little R&R &R and, and to chill out with my wife. And, you know, we have to make a decision. So let's just take me, for example. So I'm going to go to the beach. Do I really want to be researching stocks? I mean, I love what I do. I have my own company. I love helping other people. I like making life simple. But we could be going for a walk, sleeping in, getting a massage, uh, you know, maybe taking a trip, trip up to the casino, go for a nice meal, whatever it might be. But here's the point. It's going to be taking time away from what I could be doing if I'm researching stocks and spending a lot of time on it. Right. And that's something that Andrew spoke about, too. Well, within two clicks of a button, I can change all that instead of spending hours away from our families or things we want to be doing. In two clicks, I can show you the hottest stocks. Are you ready? And here's how we're going to do it. This is going to change the way we trade. It's going to change our confidence level walking into any trade. Type in any symbol to get inside. Let's just do the spiders, okay? And all we've done is gone to financial.com. Now, here's where the magic happens. All we have to do is click on the middle of our screen where it says screen right there, one click. And then we're going to click on seasonality. That's a second click. I'm going to scroll down. And what you guys see on your screen right now are the absolute hottest proven stocks for the next 13 weeks, which is basically three months, right? Four weeks in a month plus a couple days. So we're at the middle of June, right? Middle of July, middle of August, middle of September. Kids are starting to get back in school. These are it, period. We're talking about Fold, UTHR, Sealy. Under Armour, Cerner, Gilead, Celgene, WCG, Monster, Expedia, Herbalife. And it's end of story. All we've done is taken all the data that we can get our hands on. We buy data, we crunch it, and then we spit it out to you on a silver platter. No special sauce. Again, no algorithm, no black box. This is just what these stocks do. Well, that brings up a whole host of questions. <laughs> One is... For real? <laughs> is, is this true? Yes, it's just data. If you are a scientist, an engineer, and it's okay if you want to raise your hand and you're an engineer, you can, you can come, behind the, come out behind the tree. <laughs> Most of my friends are engineers, ironically. But I'm a fact-based person. I don't buy the whole fake news. I don't listen to the media. I don't listen to CNBS, none of that crap. I like the data. You might say it works, but show me the proof. Show me something I can believe in. That's what these five columns across the top of your screen are right now. 
So if I get my little handy dandy pencil out and I'll use the highlighter and I show you these socks, just like you see on the screen, all this is, is one four letter word. Look at my chicken scratch, <laughs> it's data. All it is is data. I'm not telling you these stocks historically rise over the coming weeks, the stock's own data is. Are you with me so far? That brings up the next question. How on earth is this possible? I mean, this really can't be true, right? Stocks really can't do the same thing every year. Okay, you're right. They don't do the same thing every year. Nothing's ever gonna be 100%. And just because it's worked hypothetically 100% in the past, it can't guarantee it's gonna happen again. But if I start telling you some of these stocks you're looking at have 10, 20, or maybe 30 years of being publicly traded, and yet this is what they do on average specifically over the next 13 weeks, sort of makes you tilt your head and pay you know even closer attention, right? Now, another common question. Okay, Ron, so I, I hear you, it's just data, but why? Two words, big money. Now, I'm not trying to sound like Vanna White or Pat Sajak on Wheel of Fortune, even though I like watching it every night, <laughs> but it's big money. All of us here today, and I know the markets are closed, but assuming there's no massive sized trading accounts in the hundreds of millions or something or billions, if we all got together and the market was open today and we went in and we tried to buy a hundred or a thousand shares of Under Armour or a hundred shares of Gilead, whatever it might be, or maybe some Expedia, we might not even make one block trade on the CNBS ticker. Not even one. Or maybe you won't. Then the thing goes by on the screen and then we're irrelevant. The only way this works, what you're seeing and when I say it works, let me rephrase. The way the data presents itself, the way you are seeing the data is if the big money does it year after year after year as a, as, as a majority. If I go ahead and I delete these lines, starting to get a little crazy, and we take a stock like Under Armour and we see that, and by the way, I don't know if you got to see this, but I'll, I'll scroll up just a little. All I've done is ask the software, it's, hey, financial, and to use a joke, I like to say, hey, financial Alexa, <laughs> one word so I can't get in trouble with Amazon. <laughs> you know, hey, financial, can you show me stocks that are gonna rise at least 5%, specifically over the next 13 weeks, with at least 70% or better historical accuracy? Now, keeping things simple, that's all I've done. And then these stocks populate. This data is updated every single night for the next day's trade. So given this is Saturday, the data was updated Friday evening for Monday's trade. So let's get back to this big money thing and how this works. So my business partner has worked at a massive hedge fund. The hedge fund is so large that if I told you who the head of it was, you would instantly know them. We had to sign an NDA. I cannot disclose who the hedge fund was, but let me tell you this, they are 100% aware of what I'm showing you because they know they help create it. The only way stocks go up and down is if the big money cares. Earnings reports, what about those? What about upgrades and downgrades? I'm gonna show you proof it's completely irrelevant. Now, now I get it, you might be like, well, that's just not true, Ron. Actually, it's 100% true. Earnings reports really don't matter. It's only if the big money decides it matters because even though you hear that Apple or Under Armour or Expedia might have the best quarter in their history, if there's not enough people buying the stock, 100% um, guaranteed the stock's going nowhere or it's going down. That's irrefutable. Now you can say, well, what about someone like a Buffett, right? Buffett buys stocks like Apple and holds them for 10 or 20 years. That's different. That's not what I'm talking about. When I show you earnings reports and I show you how the stocks historically move, your mouth is going to hit the floor during certain periods where companies seemingly always have fantastic earnings reports and you sit there saying, man, I'm buying it on the opening bell or I'm buying it as soon as I can. And then somehow you buy the high tick of the day and the stock starts plummeting. And then you scratch your head and say, what on earth is going on here? How can a stock have raised guidance, making more money than ever, they raised a dividend, 
Four analysts came out and upgraded it, and yet the stock is trading lower by 4% on the day. That's because the big money decided to sell to all the sheep, which are you and me, the retail traders. They already know what they were going to do. So where there's going to be earnings reports biases. And I, and I have proof of this. I'm going to show it to you as well. So what, let's do a recap. The stocks on your screen rise at least 5% over the next 13 weeks. I can tell you specifically the percent increase. I can also sort by probability of increase. If you were to say to me, hey, Ron, can you show me which stock has the best track record over the next 13 weeks? Yep, we sort that column right there. And the winner winner chicken dinner is Under Armour. Even Domino's and Google are on this page. Okay, so I can sort by percent increase. Who's the biggest winner? I can sort by probability of increase. Now, another question comes. How do we know which ones might be better than others? I mean, I'm sure some have a better chart. Uh, to use uh, one of uh, Andrew's comments and something that Hubert likes too is Ichimoku. I like that too. You know, maybe there's some that just look a little better. I mean, how do we know which ones to pick? Okay, what if, not, what if, not only can I tell you which ones rise the most, by percent gain, which ones have the highest probability of actually doing it? What if I could also tell you this? What if I could tell you that not only are all these stocks on your screen, the biggest winners historically, the best horses in the race, I can actually tell you which ones are the best of the best the shiniest apples, the best looking strawberries, whatever it is you want, but these are the best of the best. And this is gonna be based on four things. Fundamental analysis, that means earnings reports. So a business partner I've been in the markets a while, uh, he actually went to a top business school in the country, finished top 1% in his class, worked at a hedge fund. It gives a different insight into the market. So when we say balance sheets and earnings reports, we actually know how to dig into those. So that's the F part, the fundamentals. We also take into account the C for the chart or T for technicals. How is the chart looking? We also take into account the sentiment around the stock. And then we also take into account the raw seasonality data, the repetitive patterns throughout the stock's history. We take all four together and then we give it a buy and sell rating. This column right here, this stock score, this is our proprietary algorithm. So you can say, Ron, you know what? I wanna draw a line right here. And you know, you sound like a nice guy and all, but I just wanna trade with facts. That's over here on the left. But wouldn't it be really cool, not only to trade with some facts, but also, if the chart was looking good, if the fundamentals were looking good, if the seasonality was looking good too, and you put all that together, and the answer is I can do that for you with one click of a mouse. I can actually call the herd and not just show you which ones have seasonal track records. I can actually show you which, which ones are actually bullish. If I scroll up and I hit advanced filtering, I can take our proprietary stock rating and make it a buy and watch what's going to happen. When I scroll back down, now the, the herd has been culled. We're now looking at only the shiniest apples in the bucket. The best of the best trading ideas with one click of a mouse. We've gotten rid of all the ones that aren't quite up to par right now. Fundamentally, technically, sentiment, and their seasonality just isn't strong enough. Because you could say the seasonality looks wonderful right now. And remember, FOLD? Fold was at the top of the list before. It's gone. UTHR was at the top of the list. It's gone. Just because they've been historically the best winners, they're not looking so hot right now. And I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole. You know who I would consider touching? All these guys. So the amount of time that we can save you based on Hardcore factual data 
and the algorithm is extraordinary. All right, time for the next question. Okay, so we've called the herd. I mean, that sounds amazing. You've just shown me the best of the best. I have, based on hard factual data, stocks own track record as our secret weapon. But now which ones do we pick? Do we just go up here and pick TPX or do I sort over here and take the biggest increase? All right, this is up to you. I can't tell you what to trade. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. I tell wannabe and I don't want the government in my life. So now what? Here's what I do. While all of these are historically bullish and they all have a buy rating too using our proprietary data, where we calculate the fundamentals, technical sentiment, so forth. I'm going to pick stocks here that I like. What does that mean? Stocks that I might be using myself, maybe some stocks that I just find the industry interesting. So I can pick by probability of increase. I can pick by percent increase. And some of the stocks that we talked about just a couple weeks ago, look at Under Armour, still on the list. Look at CERN, still on the list. And you guys know when Jeanette and Hubert were kind enough to invite me in, Back at the end of May and the beginning of June, CERN and Under Armour were on this list, as was Expedia right down here. So I love to travel. Andrew said he's headed off to uh, Eastern Europe. That sounds like amazing. I was supposed to be in Europe right now doing these webinars. I was supposed to be in Vienna, except our cat got sick. And I know my place in the house. If our house ever was on fire, my wife is grabbing the cats and I'm on my own. So we canceled the trip. And we're going to go to the beach instead now that the cat's finally doing better. But here's the point. I love to travel. So maybe I want to trade Expedia. Maybe I want to trade Under Armour because I have their apparel or their shoes. Maybe I want to trade Gilead or Celdream because I like the drug industry, the biotech industry. So my point is it doesn't matter, right? Let's just write down a couple. In fact, why don't we just start with the fourth one? We could actually take Gilead. Just for something different because, hey, a couple weeks ago, we already talked about some of these others, right? What we're going to do is we're going to scroll up. And I'm going to click search. And I'm going to click seasonality. Now, all I'm going to do is type in that ticker symbol, the G-I-L-D. That's it. I'm going to scroll down. And what you're looking at right now is just hard data. It's just the stock's own historical track record nothing else and what's really neat about it oops hang on one second i just need to get rid of that i hit the wrong button my apologies come on back there we go now let's get the pen this is past p a s t this is what the stock has done it's just a solid line to give you some representation of what the stock's chart looks like. It's just really simple to follow, right? Over on the right-hand side, this is the probabilistic future price. I can't predict where a stock is gonna go. And I think most people would say that. And if you do, you probably get in trouble with the government. <laughs> You're not supposed to be doing that, right? But Based on the stock's own track record, I can give you a dotted line of where the stock would end up if the stock lived up to its fact-based historical track record. Remember, we're only using the stock's own data as our treasure map. And look what happens. There's a surge. There's a pause. There's a surge. There's a pause. And there's a surge. This is really, really important. And I see the counter is rising again. So some more folks are coming in. I am not telling you what this stock is about to do. The stock is telling you, shouting from the rooftops, hey, hey, this is what I do. There's a difference. Not me. The stock is talking. Could you imagine knowing that if this is how your stock traded throughout the year, you could be potentially aggressively bullish here. You could look for covered calls here, aggressively bullish here, covered calls here, aggressively bullish here. You could literally match different trading applications, different styles of trading to exactly how that stock historically trades. I mean, how many times have you seen a stock in an uptrend 
and then you buy it and you magically buy the last day it went up. Well, did you come to financial and check? Because if you move your mouse over this line, I can tell you precisely how it trades, even to a specific date. Now, a stock doesn't live up to its historical average every single day of the year or every single week. That's not how this works. This is all an approximation based on the stock's own track record. And I got to tell you, over the next 13 weeks, which sort of is a specific time frame, right? This stock has historically risen by 11.31%. Not kidding. In fact, if I take you up here and we change stocks, let's go to Under Armour. Because somebody, asked, I think Wayne asked about that in the chat box. We can move our mouse here on Under Armour and see that over the next 13 weeks, Under Armour is projected to rise 12.32% and close at 29.37 with an 84% historical probability. Could you imagine? Now it's afternoon time here on the East Coast. I'm based in Pennsylvania. Um, but if what if you're on the West Coast, maybe in California or Oregon or something, maybe Vegas? My second home. <laughs> um, could you imagine having coffee with your friends tomorrow morning and saying, hey, uh, yeah, I was looking for some trade ideas and I found Under Armour. You say to your friend and your friend's like, oh, well, you know, why do you say Under Armour? Well, I think it can rise by 12.32 percent over the next 13 weeks. And I feel 84 percent probable that it's going to happen. I think they're going to look at you. Check your coffee cup and see if you meant you went from Starbucks coffee to an Irish coffee. They're going to think you might have spiked it. But that's exactly what the stock is telling you. When's the last time you walked into a trade AD and felt that confident? 84% of a double digit move. Not based on a secret sauce, just based on what the stock is telling you. It's literally tapping you on the shoulder, whispering in your ear saying, hey, if there was ever a time to go long Under Armour, you might want to think about now. And by the way, a month ago, almost to the day when I did this webinar, we talked about Under Armour and there's the dotted line. And if I bring a chart of Under Armour in, I'm using Thinkorswim as well. Look what happened at the end of May. It started moving, it pulled back, and then it ripped higher by four more dollars. We were right here when I told you guys about it a month ago. Fast forward and there it goes. A month ago, I showed you XP, oops, I showed you Expedia, which was on the chart. What was Expedia doing? I said to you guys, oh man, look at Expedia, it's going down. What did I say to you? Is I know it was recorded. I said, oh, just wait, we shall see. Maybe Expedia is gonna be a week late this year. And what happened? Turn the calendar to June, the stock goes from 115 to 130. And I told you about it over here, the stock was dead flat at that time, and then it just shoots out of a cannon. I also told you about CERN, which you guys just saw on the list, right? Well, CERN's been on the list for way over a month. Look at the gap up. Here's earnings. And since earnings in April, and then here's May when we got together at Trade Thirsty, and then it's still up another four or five bucks. I showed you Pod was on that list. Now, here's the remarkable thing. If I take you back to the S&P, let me get my little spotlight out here. Here was the S&P, and if for May was the all-time high at, at that time, and then we dropped the equivalent of 200 S&P points in the month of May, right? There's the drop. I'm going to type in pod, the stock that we talked about a month ago. Here's May. I showed you the S&P kept dropping. What did Pod do? The moment May came, up on the earnings report, and since then it's up over 20 points, 25 points. This stock actually went in the exact opposite direction of the entire market. Now the S&P is made of 500 companies. They're not equally weighted. But the theory is that 80% of the stock market will follow the major averages. So if the S&P and the Dow and the Qs, if they're all moving down and they're getting whacked like they were in May, eight out of 10 stocks are gonna go lower. That's just how it works on average. It's a ballpark thing. But you knew different. 
you knew to watch these four stocks. And in fact, you actually were able to identify a stock based on what I showed you a month ago that went in the exact opposite direction. And that's exactly what happened. So if you ever said to yourself, man, market goes down, stocks don't go up. Actually, some do. Even when there's a horrendous crash, wouldn't it be nice to know where the big money is putting their money? Oh, you do know. But you can go to financial, you can go screen, you can go seasonality with two clicks of a mouse and say, ha, huh, so that's the hot list. This is the hot list gang. It's different than the list I showed you a month ago because time goes by, right, of course. And as weeks change, other stocks come in and some stocks leave. Yet Under Armour, Celgene, and Expedia, three of the four I showed you a month ago, they're still in their bullish periods. Somebody was laughing about herbal life. Um, I did a private event for uh, the folks at Woodford yesterday. And we were, there was laugh, someone was laughing about herbal life. And if I show you herbal life, look what it did Friday. It actually put in a massive reversal and it was up on the day. So you can now add herbal life as another stock and the big volume is there too. It's absolutely incredible. Now, you might be saying, okay, um, so these are the stocks set to soar. Um, is, is it just certain times of the year? Gang, it's the whole year. It doesn't matter if it's the summer, if it's the winter, the fall and the spring. Stocks are going up and down. I can show you a bearish hot list too. Do you guys wanna see the bearish list? I can come in here and I already have it saved just for time purposes. If I click this little hamburger menu, I already have my bearish settings saved and I can share these with you as well. And I scroll down, I can show you that INSM, Sina, Tex, Hip, Rambus, Halo, Taiwan Semi, Nuon, all these historically trend lower this, this time of year. In fact, this is over the next eight weeks. If you own any of these stocks, you might want to write them down and take a look at them because you no longer are a deer in the headlights. You can go to this web, you can go to our website, the software, type in your stock and see how it performs. You can even put it in a watch list and we can even tell you how it performs. I'll get to that later. But you're no longer the deer in the headlights. You're no longer you know, wandering around in the forest at night, come Monday morning saying, golly gee whiz, Batman, I wonder what stock has a good chance of going higher and lower. I can tell you, using the stock zone treasure map. This is how the big money pushes it around. I can also do one better. If I take you back to search and I take you to seasonality, and let's say we type in Gilead again, that's one of the stocks that was on our list and a stock that I just mentioned two weeks ago and yesterday. We're gonna scroll back down Remember, we can move our mouse and we can see that the stock has a 70% track record over the next 13 weeks. Well, that's cool. We, we, we already learned that. Wouldn't it be also really cool to know, hey, Ron, when is the best time of the whole year for me to own that stock? Would that be pretty cool to know? So if I'm a bull, when is the best time to own Gilead? Okay, let's have some fun. Hey, Financial Alexa, can you tell us when the best time to own this stock is for the whole year where it has its biggest historical bang for the buck, its biggest percent move of the whole year? Take your mouse, click best period, and you got your wish. This software can tell you when the stock has its biggest run of the entire year using the stock's own data as your secret weapon. It's right now. Could you imagine if you were thinking about being bearish on Gilead? You're about to get your butt handed to you, historically speaking. And if you're a bull, you're probably really happy right now. Like, yes, it's now, cool. Now this is where things really get interesting. Um, there's so many of you guys here today and you, know, you might be a stock trader. Well, think of this. If you know when the stock has its tendency of being the absolute most bullish, throughout the whole year, would you sell any calls against that stock? I'd say probably not. Why not be selectively greedy and try to be an oinker? I like oinking if it makes me money. And we try to be bullish during this time frame. No covered calls, 
or man, if I am a covered call trader, I better make sure that covered call is way above where the stock is trading because I don't want to give up my shares. I know we're in the sweet spot of the whole year right now on Gilead. Okay. How about if you're a credit spread trader? Does anybody here trade bull puts or bear calls? I mean, this is pretty powerful. You've just been given the window using a multi-directional strategy of bull puts, iron condors, bull puts, iron condors, bull puts. Or when it's sideways, you could even do bear, just bear calls. How about that? How about this? What if I just want to buy some long calls? This is probably the best shot to do it using the stock zone historical data. It's this is absolutely stunning. And anybody, let me, let me make sure you understand this. Anybody can do seasonality. And what I mean by that is let's say I pick out Polly or Glenn or Wayne or Soren. Anybody here today, me, Jeanette, Hubert, any of us can go calculate a stock zone historical track record. But how many stocks are you going to get through this weekend? Three, four, five. Maybe if it's raining and the weather's crappy, 10. In two clicks, I can show you the whole market. We're talking about just raw data here. That's it. A perfect example of what I'm showing you right now is a stock called Xilinx. I don't know. It's not the most common stock. If anybody does trade Xilinx, ticker symbol is XLNX, I think you're going to find this really enlightening. This is a one-year daily chart of Xilinx. Now, I love candlesticks. I think they're fantastic. It's, it's a way bigger, bigger insight into just trading any other way, in my opinion. The candlesticks can talk to you as well. But forget about that. I think what you see on your screen here is this big surge. What if I could tell you that I saw this coming, I told as many members at Financial as I possibly could to get ready, wait for it, wait for it. This dollar sign is an earnings report. On Thinkorswim, I use profit charts, but the dollar signs represent earnings reports. This stock was basically going nowhere, 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 nowhere. And then it just lights like a rocket ship. We even put the flames out the back. There goes the stock. And then I could tell you, by the way, folks, by the time May gets here, get the heck out of the way. Oh, my God. Well, maybe Ron has a line into the accountants at Xilinx. No, I don't. <laughs> of course, I don't. But what if I were to show you? a chartered financial that mirrors this. And it was the stock unveiling it to us. It was, it was the stock's own treasure map. You ready? I'll erase the drawings. I'm gonna take you to financial. We're gonna type in Xilinx. I was doing a bunch of free webinars back in January. Maybe some of you were there. It wasn't with Jeanette and Hubert at Trade Thursday. I was just doing them for anyone that was on our database. So here we go. Here's January. There's the surge. And here's April and May, and the stock goes flat. There's one time of the, of the whole year where Xilinx just goes nuts to the upside right there and here's the best part if i show you the chart again and you see this january to april just not so bullish move where the stock was up over 35 percent wouldn't it be absolutely hilarious i mean imagine imagine you're covering this up in fact this is what you would have seen you would have seen a stock in december it sells off at the market in january it goes back up and you would see a double top and then you see earnings and the market just started rebounding. You have no idea where this stock is about to go. No one's supposed to know, but you went to financial. You knew that if there was ever a period of time, it was that earnings report. The earnings report has a seasonal bias. This is what I was talking to at the very beginning of the webinar. There are earnings biases and there 
where it goes. If I take you to financial and we hit best period, watch where that green line goes. You ready? No blank in way. Are you, are you kidding me? Remember, this is the stock talking to you. I've done nothing special with that calculation. I can actually show you precisely when the stock has its biggest and baddest track record over that 13 week period. That 13 week period in January, could you imagine having coffee or dinner with your friends and saying, hey guys, it's early January. I know Xilinx really hasn't gone anywhere while the market's going nuts, but guess what? In about three days, there's an earnings report and history says this little sucker goes nuts. That 13 week period, the stock has a 20.03% gain 83% of the time. You're not guessing, you're not wondering, you're not playing horseshoes and hand grenades and trying to get close. You know exactly when it's going to happen historically. And what happened? Oh, the stock actually went up like 40%. Oops, it went way more than the averages. You could have talked yourself out of this trade by saying double top. It's not going up with the market, but you actually had hard factual data behind you. If you took a position before earnings, and I did this with every single person at financial that was attending the webinar, we had hundreds, we had thousands of people attending these webinars. And I said to everybody, put it on paper. 83% of the time, this is what it does. Let's see if it does it again. One of the great things about Thinkorswim is it has this thing called think back. So it can make a believer or a liar out of somebody really quick. If you go back to January 18th, which was about three days before the earnings report, you come in here and we, we buy an active money call option. We're just going out about two months. So the stock's at 93, we can buy a $95 call. That is 465 bucks per options contract. That's it. If you're a stock buyer, well, you know what your, your cost basis is. It's $93 and 52 cents, but I love options. 465 bucks for one contract. After earnings, the stock went up and it just kept going up. If I just go to March 1st, just to March 1st, I can take this calendar, click March 1st, and that $95 call is now worth $30.80. $465 became $3,080. That's on one contract. You do the math if you did 10, right? 4,600 is worth 30 grand. And this was for the world to see. All based on historical data. Even if you waited till after the stock had its earnings gap up, which you could call prudent because earnings reports are supposed to be crapshoots. We're not supposed to know how they trade. That is absolutely true. But yet you had the stock whispering in your ear saying, this is what the big money typically does. Historically, it's done it 83% of the time. Maybe this year is the one year it doesn't. So you say, all right, we're going to wait till that day after earnings. What would it look like if we would have bought a call at the end of the day on 124? Because you might be saying, ah, Ron's just trying to show us the best of the best. Not at all. <laughs> this is, we, we, we all talked about it. If I waited to March 24th, the stock was at 106. If I go up to $110 call, it's $3.90, right? 390 bucks. If we go to March 1st, oops, it's worth 16.65. So 300 and some dollars turns into 1,600. So you didn't have to jump the gun and say, hmm, let's see what happens. You could have waited after the fact and then look at the volume. The volume is a place where the big fish can't hide. They leave footprints. It's like an elephant walking in the pasture, you know, a deer track outside or a bear track or whatever you might want to call it. When they buy, they leave footprints. They don't always buy in one day. They often spread it over days and weeks. And when they get out, they get out over days and weeks. It's that simple. You now know when exactly the best period for Xilinx is. And you might say, man, I buy and hold stuff for a year or two or three or four. But when you go back and you look at that stock and you'll even hear this on from other talking heads and even on TV, the gains are often in very short periods of times for the whole year. Well, guess what? 
You now know when that is, don't you? You sure do, based on the stocks on track record. Period. End of story. I want to do two other examples. Let me just check my time. We're doing good here. I want to do two other examples because I think it really, really highlights how this works. Um, does anybody here follow Netflix and Adobe? Actually, we'll do Adobe first. So give me a couple of yeses if you do. Um, Soren, you had a question, how often is the uh, data uploaded? The data is uploaded every single night for the next day's trade. So today's Saturday, yeah, the, the trading data from Friday has been added to the database. And this would be now for Monday's trade. Hey there, Lawrence, how you doing? Um, if the future trend is based on past performance, how does it calculate it? So it takes each week, each year, and says, how did the stock do? Up, down, sideways. And that's how we get that projection. There's actually periods of times throughout the year where there's big up moves, big down moves, and then it's just chop suey city where it goes nowhere fast. All right, I'm gonna take you to Adobe. A couple of you guys are saying yes. And to me, this is so empowering to trust the data versus trying to believe that you or I and our homework and our version of the fundamentals is good because you can do all the homework you want, but if the big money is not ready to commit, your stock's going nowhere or worse, it might go down. And then you look back and you say, oh, if I just would have held it another couple months, I would have been right. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You now know when, quote, they, in bunny ears and italics, do it. I can show you when they do it because the history says this is when they do it. There's no trusting me. It's just the data. So here's Adobe. Now, this is not a political show. So whether you like or hate the president, completely irrelevant. Don't really care. I just like money. You can think back to November election 2016. Here was the market and there went Adobe. You see that little one day pop went up a couple bucks. Just for comparison, here's the S&P 500 after the election. Here was the S&P, there's the pop up and then it just goes bonkers. One of the most bullish runs after a presidential election ever. The S&P via the spiders went from 197 or so all the way up to 215. That's the equivalent of the S&P being around 2000 and going to 2150, 150 to 200 point gain in the S&P in a month and a half. That's extraordinary. In fact, Carl Icahn that night of the election said, I'm buying a billion dollars of stock or it was more than a billion. If I remember correctly, it, the market went nuts. So what do you do? Maybe you follow Netflix and Adobe and you say, man, Adobe has been publicly traded for three decades. They make a great product, arguably. And you just think that, you know what? Good, stable company. So we type in Adobe again. Oops, A-D-B-E, wrong stock. We come in here and there's our one day pop. Let me get my little pencil. There's our one day pop because of the, the election. Meanwhile, the market's going nuts higher. Your stock decides to drop five, six percent. At this point, you're probably like this. I am not happy. I wouldn't be either. And by the way, I've pretty much done everything wrong you could possibly do as a trader. I've blown up trading accounts. In fact, I started getting really good at it. And then I realized this is really dumb, right? You stop. I, I got a t-shirt full of, 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 of a closet full of t-shirts saying, don't do this. So I've learned the hard way. And it's one of the reasons why we build financial is because whenever I would buy a stock, it would, I would be the, like the last person to buy and the stock crashes. You know, you can raise your hand and I think we've all been there, done that. All right. So you get the, you get the story. Stock goes down and then it rebounds. Meanwhile, the stock market is still going higher and then it falls down again. You're down like 8%, but then Oh, but then this purple line is what they call the 200 day moving average. This is an institutional moving average. It's what the big players pay attention to. I don't call it that. That is its common name in the markets. The 200 day, that purple line. Oh, oh man, look, hammer, hammer time. And then it starts coming back up. 
Meanwhile, the market's still going higher. You're still down 3%. But then, oh, but then, what does that little dollar sign mean? Well, that means earnings, right? Talked about that before. And we've all been told earnings matter. Adobe was trading at 100 and some bucks. How many of you guys would like to own Adobe at 100 and some bucks, right? In today's market, be amazing. So we're told earnings matter. And I forgot to mention this. What time of year are we in? Oh, we're in November and we're in December, which is one of the most bullish times of the entire stock market year, the whole calendar, November and December. And by the way, the market is still going higher. So now you've said to yourself, okay, I bought Adobe at 108. Got it. I understand it's around 106 and I'm down 2%, but oh, earnings, that's what matters. Earnings comes out and the stock then rolls over a little bit again. It drops another 2% and the volume was massive. You get to the end of the year and you're having one of those, are you kidding me moments? Because I've been there and I bet a lot of you have too. You bought the one stock that didn't go higher. You didn't even break even. You're down like 5%. So what do you do at the end of the year? You say, oh man, I'm just a bad trader. I did it again, but this wasn't my fault. I bought a great company. I don't understand why Adobe wouldn't go higher. So what do you do at the end of the year? You recommit to trying to make money. You sell your losers. You wanna start fresh on January 1st. It's a new year, it's a resolution. You tell your spouse you're sorry and you're gonna do better again. What if I told you that Adobe is historically dead weight in November and December, not just of a presidential year, every year, it doesn't go anywhere based on hard proven data. So instead of buying Adobe, after the election, you would have said, I know one stock I'm not buying. It's Adobe. It doesn't go anywhere. You ready? There goes Adobe. January 1st, the stock goes from around 105 in a straight line to 145. It pauses and then it goes up into the 150s. Are you kidding me? And here was earnings right there. So earnings was December 15th, January 1st. Well, the first trading day of the year, the second, third, it started ripping. Look at the volume. The big fish were coming back. The black bars are bigger than the red bars. This is where I get angry because I don't know if you know my background, but I'm basically the farm country in Pennsylvania. I never went to college. I don't have a degree in anything other than common sense. And I would read all these books, follow everybody else. Nothing ever really seemed to work. And then I had to teach myself, which is basically what I had to do from scratch because I, I really found the stock market interesting. I was always told earnings matter. Earnings, earnings, earnings. Got to dig into those reports. I even considered taking night classes while I was at my retail job to learn finance. Because everyone just said earnings, earnings, earnings. You, you guys tell me between December 15th here and January 1st there. There's nothing that changed. The earnings report was the same as it was 14 to 15 days ago. The only difference was that big money wasn't trading it. It was off doing other stuff. January 1st is when it matters. That's when they committed and that's when they pushed the stock. So what did they do for those 15 days? They basically had all the sheep selling in theory that they could go buy the shares themselves before it went on an epic run. So the next time someone tells you earnings matter, you can sort of look at them and say, oh, totally agree, dot, 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 but only if the big money cares. Because without the big money, it doesn't matter what earnings report that company comes out with. It's only if there's enough buying pressure to push it higher. You now know when that happens with Adobe. So if I come in here and I erase all these drawings, there's no way this is gonna happen two years in a row, right? Now the president's been in office a year. Here's November of 17, December of 17. The stock went down again. There's the earnings report. You guys now know January, the stock is a rock star. Are you kidding me? It went up again. 
right? Well, no, no, no. There's no way it's going to be three years in a row. Now, here's October, November, and December. The stock market was bearish in December. We all know, right? What? Watch what happens in January. Oh, there goes Adobe again. So if we go to financial and I type in the ticker symbol Adobe, what are we going to expect to see? Ready? November, December. November, December. January, February, March. Up we go. Like clockwork. And if I come in here, and I show you the best period for Adobe, when do you think the best period for Adobe is going to be? For 13 weeks, 15 weeks, 19 weeks, 20 weeks? You guessed it. Could you imagine all these years of trading Adobe? There's really only one three, four, five month period where all the gains happen. You now know when that is. Guys, you can do this for every single stock. You're no longer wondering which ones go up when. The stock is telling you, hey, I'm Adobe. Don't touch me in November and December, but for God's sakes, pay attention come January. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do Netflix. If you guys trade Netflix, this is something you have got to pay attention to. This, is, this one is good for so many reasons. Once again, presidential election. Here's Netflix. One day gain. Stock drops from 125 to 112. So this is way worse than Adobe. A couple of days after, you were only down like three bucks in Adobe. You're down 12 bucks with Netflix. You're not even break even. So now you're really upset. Eh, but then there's a little bit of a rally. And then you finally get the break even. This is what Netflix typically does every November and December. It is dead weight. So if I jump the gun and I bring you guys here and I show you Netflix before I even tell you what the stock actually did. Ready? Here's the best. Here's the, the, the picture of Netflix using the stock's own data as our weapon. There is November and December, right? You can see January. You guys see that, right? And then look at the ex explosion. I almost used the naughty word there. <laughs> I was going to say freaking explosion. Sorry about that. It goes nuts. Let's go back to the chart. So you buy Netflix, you get to the end of the year and you say, oh, whole stock market's going higher. I'm a bad trader again. I'm going to go sell it. Start the new year anew. Fresh stocks, I'll go buy something else. Um, you had the right stock. You just had the wrong time. January Netflix, this is after the presidential election upper 120s, straight up to 145, consolidates, and then goes to 165. Okay, that was then. 2017. You guys got the idea, right? Stock's going nowhere. We go to January. Look at this. I, I literally want to scream to everybody and say, look at the big money coming in. They bought this company ahead of the earnings report. They were buying it because, wink, wink, they know. People are buying it. The stock goes from under 200. And within one month, I'm sorry, two months, within two months, the stock goes from 200 to 300. When's the last time you had a 50% stock gain on a $200 stock? And it's not that you got lucky. You went to financial. You saw when that best period is. You're looking right at it. It's literally, it's like if I could make financial have like a mini taser and it could just like softly tase us to alert us to the stocks, that'd be really cool as long as it wasn't painful. Um, it's like poke, 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 poke. Hey, look at me, look at me. This is when I do it. Financial told you based on the stock's own data when this was likely to happen. Oh, it did it again, didn't it? Man, I hate when this is always right or seemingly right. Always right. Seemingly always right. You get the idea. All we're doing is using historical data. There's no guarantee the stock is ever going to do it again. Period. But then it just keeps happening. Huh. I wonder if there's a pattern to this. 
It's what the big money is doing. So this is just this past year. So Kevin and some of you other guys that said that you follow Netflix, when the market was getting killed in December, it was arguably, I think at that point, statistically, it was the worst December going into Christmas Eve ever in the market. Do you remember all the stuff on CNBC? Sorry, CNBS. I was reading articles at thestreet.com, Zero Hedge, and they were all saying, not all, I'm paraphrasing, but there were numerous reports out there, Netflix is losing subscribers. Netflix is losing pricing power. Disney's gonna come out with their own and it's gonna kill Netflix. Amazon is gonna kill Netflix. I gotta tell you something. When I am trading a stock that you guys are seeing, I have to disclose it and I want to disclose it and I do disclose it. So I can't trade every single one because everything's going to be a, hey, I'm trading this. So I said to the folks, I'm not gonna trade this so everybody else can have it, all right? Here's Netflix. Are you paying attention to all the bad news? And some folks said, yeah, it's actually crazy. Maybe this is the one year it's not gonna live up to its historical average. I said, gosh, you know, you could be right. You know, I don't know, but why don't we just wait and see? There's no reason to buy this stock ahead of time. I mean, I don't need to go stand in front of a truck. Let's just see what happens come January. I think that's very fair. You ready? This is after all the bad news articles. There goes Netflix. This stock, once the calendar turned, look at the volume already coming back in. The stock goes from 270 to 350. It went up 80, $90 in two weeks. Are you kidding me? This was over a 200% return. The last Netflix rally was over, I think, a Five or close to 500% if my memory serves me, this was almost 300% on at the money call options. Could you imagine being a stock trader saying, oh, you guys can just, yep, kill Netflix, keep doing it. I don't, I don't touch it, you're not hurting me. But come January, I'm gonna watch you like a hawk. And there pop goes the weasel. They bought this in front of earnings just like they did in years past. Earnings pull back and it goes right back up. You knew, you knew because you went to financial and you said, that's when they do it. Over that, over this 13 week period, Netflix has risen 82% of the time by 32%. Guys, 32%, I mean, that's massive. Yep, and you knew to expect it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner again. Frankly, now for Netflix, I don't wanna trade Netflix again until January. I just keep moving my money to different pockets of the market over and over again. That's my goal, that's what I wanna do. That's what I'm trying to teach everybody. Do all this on paper, there's no risk. I can't tell you what to do, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, I don't wanna be. Put these trade ideas on paper. You've attended the events a couple weeks ago. You see how those stocks did. We were four for four. I mean, three out of four would've been pretty good, but four for four, crazy good. And it's happening throughout the year, whether it's the Christmas time when the stock is actually going against the market, while it's rising, and then January, it goes bonkers. Xilinx, does anybody here trade the stock AMD? Robert says he does. Okay, I think this is gonna be a jaw-dropping moment too. Every July and August, AMD, while the market really goes nowhere, it just starts getting crazy and it just gets bullish. AMD went from around $15 in July up to over $30 in September. So in the course of two months, this stock doubled in value in two months. And then in two months, it gave it all back. Would that be frustrating? Would you say, oh my God, that's terrible. Had you gone to financial, typed in AMD, Look what happens. This doesn't look like much of a rise, but when you see the scale over here on the right, that's a huge rise. There's the rise, there's the fall. You would not have been run over in a stock like AMD. You literally could have walked in and said, this is when it runs, oh my God, I double my money. You exactly know when to walk away. Historically speaking, there's no guarantees, but you knew in September and October it peaks. 
and then it gave it all back. You're going to sit here like a genius when all your friends are stuck holding the bag and you're saying, I got in and got out in two months. That's all I needed to trade AMD for the whole year. Now it's time to go on to something else. And you guys can keep doing this over and over again. So here's what I'm going to do. Hubert and Jeanette, so I want to keep you guys on time. We've been going an hour. Here's the deal. They said to me when I came to Trade Thirsty, Ron, we want the best deal you're ever going to give people. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Because to get access to financial and a host of other amazing tools that we haven't even covered, it's $17.88. And Hubert and Jeanette said, really? I'm like, yeah, that's the price and it's worth every penny. And when I showed them, they were blown away and said, oh my God, we agree. And they said, but we want, the, we want your best price. I said, okay, um, a month ago, this was in May, I raised the price, it's 497. Um, that was, or not raised the price, I lowered the price to 497 because that's my best sale price. I don't go any lower than that. And then Hubert and Jeanette said, but wrong, we want the mother of all deals. And I'm like, guys, it's worth 1800 bucks. It's worth 1788. And 497 is just stupid. They said, yeah, but have you ever, this is the first time I ever came to Trade Thirsty's group. Have you ever made it cheaper? I said, well, there was one time um, at the holidays, I did something better. And I was like, all right, I can give that too if you really, if that's what I need to bring. And they said, yes. So I only offered this price at year end. And I brought it back for Trade Thirsty. It's too cheap. It is really the best price you're ever going to see. There's no, well, I'm sure Ron had it cheaper. I've never had it cheaper. This is my original charter member price when I opened financial to the world. The catch is I am only going to do 50 units. That's it. This is what I did yesterday with Woodford and what I did with Trade Thirsty back then and the page goes to sold out. While the accountants would love 500 new members, we're doing 50. I don't want to keep selling it at this price. And here it is. This is the absolute best price you've ever seen, you ever will see, it will never be lower. Go to financial.com slash thirsty right now and you can grab it. So I'm gonna type it in, it's gonna be 397 for a whole year. So just go to www.financial.com and then type in slash thirsty and you can get access to this. It's gonna be for the first 500 people or 50 people, not 500. And then the page is going to go to sold out. I am by myself today. So I'm going to be a little slow on some of these questions, but I'm going to do my best. Just go to financial.com slash thirsty. So Robert, do you ask where it is? I'll type it in right now. Financial.com slash thirsty. It's a special link just for trade thirsty. So here's the deal. When I did this with Hubert and Jeanette um, at the end of May, you guys, I never knew this about Trade Thirsty, but you guys max out webinar rooms. Like there's no tomorrow. When Huber and Jeanette send out an invite, you all listen. We maxed out, we sold out. They had me come back, I think it was, Jeanette might remember, I think it was three days later. I think it was a weekend for an encore. You guys maxed that one out. I was like, oh my God, and we sold out. So I came back on a Wednesday, you guys maxed that one out. Then I came back on a Saturday, you guys maxed that one out. We did five events where you guys maxed everything out. Then I did one for Woodford yesterday, which was a private event. You guys did it again there too. So when I got the call from Jeanette earlier this week and said, hey, we actually have an opening for this Saturday, I had, I actually postponed my little beach trip so I can do this webinar. We were gonna leave this morning. And you know, Jeanette said, hey, we actually have an opening and we're still getting emails because the four socks that I showed you a couple weeks ago, they all went higher because the data suggested if it lives up to its historical average, that's what they were going to do, right? Well, we're not shocked that that's what they did. Expedia, Under Armour, Cerner, Pod, they all went higher. So I'm bringing back this price that I said I wouldn't bring back. I know I did that, but I didn't expect to be back. And I wasn't going to go raise the price just because it was two weeks later when Jeanette and Hubert had been awesome. So I'm bringing it back with their blessing at 397 for a whole year. You'll be locked in at this price every year forevermore. So go to financial.com slash thirsty. We have the servers capable of hitting, of taking multiple hits at the same time. But if you're all going to the site at the same time, the page might freeze. 
I would just give it 10 seconds, hit refresh, and you should be able to get right back in. Okay. Um, so Craze 17, you're a member already. That's awesome. Robert, you tried to buy and you got an error. Okay, so Robert, here's the deal. Our processor has a special safety precaution. If you bought once just now, and then the second time it won't let you, it just prevents a double charge. So you, your first charge probably went through. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you my email address because it's just me here today. Um, I had given the team off because I didn't expect to be around this weekend and I expected to be at the beach. Um, I just sent you my email address privately, Robert. So when I end this webinar, I'm gonna go in and I'll make sure everybody's taken care of. Hey there, um, I believe that's Joe C, if I'm saying it correctly. Are there Canadian stocks? There are, let me do this. If you go to financial, this is for Joe C and any of our Canadian friends to the north. If we click screen and actually stop there, anywhere you guys see the Canadian flag, that means the Canadian data is available. If we go seasonality, you'll see it there too. As long as the stocks are being given to us, we publish the data. The next country we're trying to work on is Australia. You would think that getting data is not a big deal. Let me tell you, getting accurate data is a really big deal. So it's US, Canadian, the next country we're gonna add will be Australia for now. All right, um, Robert, you got it, you are in. Kevin, you are in. Oh, here's the other thing. Um, I'm not the best salesperson in the world. My team is way better than me. I forgot to mention this. When you guys buy at 297, please, um, I have no follow-up events with Jeanette and Hubert. This is it, and then I'm gone for a couple days. So at 397, that's less than $33 a month. It will never be cheaper, but here's the big deal. You're going to be given an opportunity via a pop-up window, and I should have said this before. You're going to be able to pick up a second year at the crazy price of 297 because I love Hubert and Jeanette. I don't know if I said this earlier, but Hubert actually helped me get started in the industry. So I'm always forever grateful. And Jeanette's just blank and amazing. She's awesome. So I'm talking to these guys and they're like, is there any way you can make it even better, better just for us? I'm like, hey, you already have 397. I don't even wanna sell it at this price because our members stick like molasses in January, they don't leave because they love the data. They keep seeing what stocks are likely to do historically. I said there was one time I ran a second year at 297, but I, I actually pulled that off. I brought it back for them too. So this is like a three fur. You're getting my absolute best deal ever. This is going back two years ago at 397. You're being grandfathered in for life at 397, the charter membership price. And I brought back the second year at 297. Now here's the catch with that 297. There's no order page. So then how do you grab it? After you hit buy, there's going to be a window that's gonna pop up. So you gotta have your pop-up blocker in enabled, not disabled. Your pop-up blocker has to be enabled. There'll be a little window and says, hey, do you wanna take advantage of this super crazy deal for 297? That's the only spot you can do it. If you've had your pop-up blocker on and you didn't see it, you then have to type your question in right now so I can give you my email address or reply back to your, your purchase email that we sent you confirming your receipt and say, hey, I want the second year and I'm gonna have to process that on Monday. I can't even do it today because I don't even know how. My team will be back on Monday and they'll be able to call you and get the information. All I know is it's a manual thing. So three part, 397, you can just buy one year if that's what you want. But I'm gonna tell you this, you're gonna kick yourself in the pants when you see how well this continually performs based on the stock's own data. You're gonna say, oh, I wish I would've grabbed that year at 297. You're not gonna get the chance. So I see we have some people joining us now. Robert G, we got you, you're down there in Virginia. So Robert, we did get your order. Um, we got Kevin M for two years. 
in New York. Um, I'm trying to keep up. We got Wayne oh, in the great state of Texas. I just hope you're not a Cowboys fan. And unfortunately, I got to use my phone to see these. They're not downloading the rest of the orders. All I see is sale, 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 sale. So if I count this up, that's 18 already. So it's 18 and 50. We're down to 32. Let me get the chat box up. So once again, it's fine. It's www.financial.com slash thirsty. We are down to 32. Now one, we are down to 32, 31 packages left. And I'm going to be a delay here because I can't do it all. Okay. So there is your link. Questions. Oh gosh. Come on back question box. I am not done with you. Is the 297 lifetime? Nope, it's a one shot deal. I really appreciate the question, but the answer is no. I don't wanna sell it at 397. We're gonna be putting the prices up because it's worth so much more value. Our goal when we took financial live is this. We wanted to get this into as many hands as possible. And over the past two years, we've done that. We're blown away at the response we've gotten. For Hubert and Jeanette, I'm bringing it back for them. 397, you're locked in for life every year. As long as you're a member, you get this price for platinum access. The second year is a one-time deal right now where you can pick up that year for 297. I strongly urge you to do it. I feel 100% confident you're gonna love it. You're gonna be able to type in your stock and see where it historically goes. ETFs, that's a common question. As long as there is an ETF, the answer is yes. You will be able to do SMH, IYT, XLF, banks, transport, semiconductors. You can type in EEM for emerging markets. You can type in FXE for the Euro. Just keep in mind that the ETF itself needs to have a history. If it hasn't had a history, well then seasonality doesn't work. And that should be expected, right? We want stocks that have lots and lots of years of being publicly traded. What else do you get? You're gonna to get to search seasonality. That's where you type in your own stocks. So if you have Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Faceplant, Brazil ETF, whatever it might be, um, you can type it in and see how they historically perform. There's a screener, which is what I let out today's webinar with. You can look for the hottest bullish and bearish stocks with two clicks of a mouse. There's also stock score. This is our proprietary algorithm. You can come in to financial, hit search, hit stock score. And then let's say you wanna type in Starbucks. I love Starbucks. I've been completely yuppieized since moving from the country into a town. If we come down to Starbucks, I can show you over 52 weeks, over a whole year, when this stock has been on a buy and been on a sell using our proprietary algorithm. What I mean is, we take into account fundamental analysis, earnings sheet, uh, earnings reports, balance sheets, technical analysis, the chart, the sentiment around the stock and the seasonality. We put all four into one, put it into our little blender and we give it a value. If you're a longer term trader, can you imagine how helpful this could potentially be for you? Here's Starbucks. Red means it's on a sell. Green means it's on a buy. It's on a buy right around 51. It stays on a buy to what? 66. That's plus 15. You're then out. You're then back in. And then you're up another, what, 15 points, 20 points? You could actually just follow our stock score if you want to. There's so much in here that if I took the time to show it to you guys, this is going to be about a three-hour webinar. Everybody that signs up today, I get asked, hey, is there like a special VIP webinar or private member webinar? About once a month, I do a webinar. There's no set date. It's whenever I'm free, I send you an email, we get together, I record it and I email it out to every single member. That way you guys can show me, or you guys can ask me any questions, I can show you the answers. I'll show you my favorite stocks, I'll show you my, my exit system if you care to know it. Some of you guys do it on your own, I'll show you what works for me. I get asked about, you know, what's the track record? The track record is the stock. But when I do these webinars, I actually write down the stocks we talk about. In March, when I did a webinar for the people at Financial, my company, we talked about EDU, C-Trip, Tiffany's, and Home Depot. 
this is a one month trade all using the stock's own historical track record. Over the past three weeks, <clears throat> those are the four stocks. Now, I can add Gilead, right? We can add, um, R, was it RMD? We can add VRTX. There's others that we just saw on the list and I can put these on. So when I talk about them, I write them down. And then when I come back two, three weeks later, you guys say, oh my God, I can't believe this stuff keeps working. Do you know one of my favorite subject lines to send out that gets the most clicks when I wanna invite everybody to a webinar? It keeps working, dot, 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 because it just keeps working. And that is not a surprise because when you go screen and then you click seasonal screen, seasonality, and you wanna see the hottest stocks for the weeks ahead, you just come in here, you wanna find out which stocks are the hot ones, you now know. All right, I'm gonna do a quick count here. Um, Richard Z, we got you for two, you're in Illinois. I see we got somebody in Jersey for one, Robert across the, across the Delaware. I'm near the Allentown area, so we're not too far apart with you being in Cherry Hill. I think you're down closer towards between me and Philly, if I'm not mistaken. All right, I am now showing, Stanley, we got you, uh, Sharissa, we got, or Sharice, sorry, we got you, um, Tammy, we got you, Bill F, we got you, William P, we got you, Doris O, we got you, hey, we got a Ron Z, that's awesome, and we got one, two, more. this is going to put me at 21 units. All right, we are now down to 21. Let me just put this in. No, that's not right, we were at 31. Well, I can't count, we're down to 19. All right, guys, only 19 left. If you have a problem ordering, please let me know so I can make sure you're all set. We're down to 19, it's www. Let me bring it back up. .financial.com slash Thursday, which I'm gonna be quenching in about three hours when I get to the beach. All right, what other questions do we have? Robert, you logged in but joined super late. Okay, this one is being recorded by Trade Thirsty. I don't have access to today's webinar. You have to ask uh, Jeanette Hubert or Silas for it. When we do a members webinar next week, towards the end of the week when I get back from my little getaway, what we'll do is I'll be hosting it on my own platform. That way I can record it and then I can give it to you. Make sense? Gotcha, okay, perfect, 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 perfect. Do I send out text alerts? The answer is no, there's no, there's no texting needed. I do not tell you when to get in and when to get out. I'm not in that business, I don't wanna be. If I was gonna track all these trades and do a model portfolio with you, I think it'd probably be about four to five grand. It's just not worth the time. For $3.97 a year, I can show you this and let you do it. And to be honest, you don't need me to because I can show you exactly how it's done. Do you want me to do that now? I don't want to bore you with details, but if anybody's thinking about joining, would it be helpful if I showed you the entries and the exits so you can gauge for yourself if this is helpful? If I get yeses, I'll do it. If not, I don't need to. But this is so simple. A six, seven-year-old can do it. I'm not kidding. If I get run over by a reindeer tomorrow, or as my friends say, I'm taken back to my home planet of Uranus. <laughs> you guys are okay. You don't need me. All right, this is what we're going to do. So here's the exit system. And this is exactly what I will show you in next week's session. I'm not hiding anything. This is what you're going to see. And if you remember back to when I did the first webinar with Jeanette and Hubert, which I think was like May 22nd, this is what I showed you. This is the exit system. This is it, this is the secret sauce. Under Armour was trading, forget about it back then, but it was, we did three long calls on Under Armour. We went right at the money, just out a couple, uh, two months or so. They cost $1.81. So for three long calls, it's 500 bucks. That's it. And if I showed you something on Under Armour right now, just to show you, UAA, come on. To mirror what today would be, um, we'd have to go out to October. There's no 60 days there. Stocks at 26. 
there, it would be about 310 bucks. So it's more money because we're going out in time, but that's it. We just go right at the money. We look for a call option. When I wrote this for Jeanette, this is what we were talking about. It was a buck 81 and each one um, totaled 543 bucks. Okay, so in theory, I can't tell you what to do. If I had a $5,000 account, I believe 543 bucks is affordable. So what do we do? And I'm gonna show you the chart. The first long call, we're gonna sell for a 20% profit. What does that mean? And again, I'm gonna show you this on the chart, but let's get this down pat first. 20% of 181 bucks is about 36 bucks. All I'm looking to do is make 36 bucks. And if you trade options long enough, you know that if you can make 20%, that's a really good day at the office. The second long call, we're gonna sell for 100% profit. Now you might say, well, isn't that a little aggressive? It is, but when I show you the chart, you're going to say, oh my gosh, remember, when the big money comes in and pushes these stocks up and down, they're getting in for days and weeks at a time, they're leaving over days and weeks. If they were to get out all in the same day, the stock is spiking, they're overpaying for the stock, and if they're selling, they're crashing their stock. They're getting worse fills, they don't want to do that. That's what allows us to play the middle. Once the swing starts, we get in, and when we get out before they get out. Well, how can that happen? We have the treasure map. We know roughly when they like to get out. We know when they're gonna start selling because they're the ones creating the patterns. Okay, anytime you can double your money in the market is a really good day. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, dang it, take it. But here's what's so important. When I first started trading, I found that not knowing when to buy and sell was the hardest thing because as a retail trader, unfortunately, we do often the worst thing. Whenever we get a winner, we try to quick close it because we're tired of losing so much, right? And we just want a winner to feel good. Then they're done it. And then we hold our losers too long and it ends up killing us. We should be doing the exact opposite. You cut the losers quick and you let the winners run. Easier said than done, right? Ready, here we go. So if I take you to Under Armour as an example, whether we got in here or here, it doesn't matter, okay? Look at the stock moving up. Well, 20% in one day, maybe 100% in two days. And now we hold it until the stock closes below the red line. So there's your answer. What is the stop if we were to buy three long calls? It's the red line. This is an end of day trading system. I love trading the market. I love being in the market. I love having my own company, but I love my time. I do not day trade. There's nothing wrong with day trading. That's not what I'm saying. I don't want to. I don't want to watch the market all day. I want to be able to go out with my friends for lunch, talk to people whenever I want to, take my wife out for lunch, go on vacation. I wanna be on a plane, not worrying about, oh my God, is the, is the Wi-Fi gonna drop? This is all end of day. So let's just say we get in here at the end of the day, okay? So this is after I showed you guys a month ago. Let's say we get in June 3rd. If I go to analyze and I take this to June 3rd, we can play along together. Let's say June 3rd, I'm gonna buy a call on Under Armour. Let me go out to July. The stock was at 23. If we go out to July, let's say we buy the 22.50 and we pay $1.94. Just for simplicity purposes, let's say we paid $2, the math is gonna be way easier. So we're gonna pay more than it even says. July 22.50, we pay $2. Now I can add this counter and make the day go by. So we pay two. The very next day, it goes higher, and now it's worth 267. Well, if I paid, let's say, two bucks on 6.3, which is right here, at the end of the day, let's say we bought it at the end of the day, one day later, the bid price is 267. Well, what's 20% of two bucks? 40 cents. We already have 20% profit in one day. Is that how it always works? Of course not. Does it happen? It actually happens a lot, but I can't tell you what percent. It's just what the stock does. 
This one, we had 20% in one day. Perfect. The next day, oh my God, now it's up to 355. Oh my God, we're in this like two days, right? We paid two, we're not at $4 yet. So the second and the third long call remain open. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, on June 11th, so it's eight days later, now it's worth 385. We're still not at four bucks. So we hold, we hold. Oh, there, June 13th. Where's June 13? Right here, June 13, right there. So we got in on June 3rd. June 13th is right there. We have 100%. Now the second one is closed. The third one is now risk-free. And this is what I mean. If you buy three long calls and take two bucks for each one, the first one you make 20%, that $2 is gone and we're up 40 cents. The second one, you double your money. Well, that means the third one is risk-free because you've pulled in all your initial capital. We're not counting commissions, but they should be irrelevant. It's so cheap to trade this day. Now we're just holding. Oh, the third one, now it's coming back down. The moment the stock closes below the red line, any and all open contracts are closed. This is end of day. This means you can be a nurse, a doctor, a landscaper. You could be in Australia, sleeping when the US market is open. It does not matter. When it gets below the red line, the trade is closed. So the question is, what's the trigger? As long as the stock is, a, is in its window of rising, we just wanna see that it's above the red line. I'm gonna keep this really simple, Robert. As long as we're above the red line, it can be game on. When stocks are below the orange line, which is the 50 day, it's institutional moving average. Then we just wait, 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 pop goes the weasel, we get in, we can hold, and then we can keep going. We could have even gotten in over here. Almost the same difference. But when I talked to you guys on May 22nd, we were here, we were here, and then we're here. So when you look at Netflix, this is what I said to all the members this past January. Wait for the stock to get the orange line. It's game on. And there she goes. Xilinx. This was the middle of January. What did I say? We're already above all the moving averages. It's game on. All we got to do is wait for earnings to be safe. And then what happened? There she goes. Pre-earnings, it was 562% from here to here. It was crazy. 562%. I showed you this already. This is it. All you have to do, find the stock. And if it's above moving averages, and all moving averages are, I mean, you can use the cloud too. I have no problem with that. I'm going to show you two of them. That's it. This is not rocket science. I have nothing else to sell you. There's no package. There's no indicators. There's nothing. All I'm going to do is show you the raw data, show you exactly what you're seeing, and it's done. That's it. All right. A couple questions. Uh, guys, I'm going to have to go. I don't know where we are. Like I said, I'm by myself. So let me just see where we're at here. Because I need to get in the car and get going. All right. We got more. I'm not going to be able to say everybody's name. It's just not going to happen. Um, William C., we got you. Um, Brad S., we got you. Um, Bargender, we got you. Uh, Samuel, we got you. Um, is that Moreno? Um, we have you as well. Seven, eight, nine, 12, 13. That puts us at six. This is it. Um, I'm not even going to finish the counter. This is six. So we have six left. If you're Oh, the page is gone. It's financial.com slash thirsty. Go there, grab the first year. If you love what you're seeing, grab the second year because you're going to kick yourself for missing it. Go ahead and grab that second one. Three ninety seven dollars a year. You're going to be locked in forever. You can thank Jeanette and Hubert for that. They wanted me to bring it back. It was in mothballs. It's back. <laughs> Black, mothballs. Hello? Hey, it's me. I'm here. Oh, hey, Jeanette. How are you? I'm here. I just wanted you to know I'm here. I know you're trying to get out the door. And um, yeah, I think they're here. I'm going a little longer than I thought. No, I mean, it's, it's all you, but I know you're you're tired and probably wanting to get on the road. So just want you know I'm here. When you're done, I'll, I'll shut it down for you. 
Okay, um, I'm just going to go maybe like three to five minutes. You want me to shut right. it down or you want to you do it? No, I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to shut it down. Okay. I'll give them uh, the date for the next event and everything. So you go ahead. Okay, sweet. Um, so, guys, let's do three minutes. Jeanette's got to run to. I got to go. We're now down to five. So there's five left. Paige is going to go to sold out and you are going to kick yourself in the hiney later. Trust me. The members love it. They love it in part because it's just data. You guys aren't relying on me. But if you want my help, We'll do a webinar once a month. I'll get you guys going. Um, hey there, Cindy, how are you? Uh, we picked UAA because it was in our hot stock list. We hit two buttons to find them. Wayne, how do you get the green line to show on forecasts? Wayne, this is what we do. Okay, ready? We're gonna go click on search. We're gonna click on seasonality. Search, seasonality. And then we click best, period. And that pops the best period for Starbucks. We can go ahead and type in Adobe. Click on best period, then the green line for Adobe. And no shock, it's right when Netflix is too. All right, gang, we are now down to four. Four left. You got any questions, please let me know. You're gonna be getting, if, if I haven't said it yet, you're getting a covered call screener. You're gonna get a value investor stock list, which is based on our time at the hedge fund. We can show you exactly what they're looking at in terms of metrics. There are newsletters. Somebody did ask about trade ideas. We will email you trade ideas for seasonal trade ideas and covered call trade ideas. We do not follow them to the end. That is up to you. Okay, this is not a, a trading text alert service. I will show you exactly what to do. I can go back to my home planet, you'll never see me again, and you guys are gonna be on autopilot. The idea is to empower you guys so you're in control of your own destiny. You don't need me to tell you because once I show you, it's brain dead simple. Even an eight-year-old can do it. Even I can do it. Watch lists and more. All right, we are now down to three guys. This is it, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna say this, you guys made it a whole day. Holy mackerel, thank you guys for coming. When we sell the final three, the page is going to sold out. There may not be any left for the recording. I think if I remember correctly, sometimes they send out the recording. If they do, and the page might be sold out already, please grab it now. It's the best price. You're not going to see me next week and say, oh, well, Ron made it cheaper. Oh, it's never going cheaper. It's only going up. So this is the best. And then you're locked in for life for Platinum Access at 397 so a big thank you to Jeanette, Hubert, and the gang at Trade Thursday for having me in. It was great to be back. I love you guys. This is awesome. You guys ask a lot of great questions and it makes my life really easy when I do these presentations. I hope I did a good job today trying to keep things simple, showing you that these big hedge funds get way too much credit than they deserve, way more credit than they deserve. They do often the same things over and over again, which is why there is such biases in the market up and down. Gold, for example, we didn't do gold today, but gold six for six in a row. January and February, and it's horrible other times of the year. I can show you that for almost every stock you want to take a look at. So again, financial.com slash thirsty. It's $3.97 for a whole year. You're not going to see it cheaper ever. The price is going up. And I want to say a warm welcome to all the new members that came in today. So Jeanette, I'm turning it over to you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate being here. It's been awesome. Again, your people are fantastic.